I had to go. Like, bad. The sensation hit me as I pulled in the Walmart parking lot. A terrible gurgling that bubbled in my stomach. I gingerly put my car in park and placed a hand on my gut, as if it would help me thwart the uncomfortable churning. Suddenly, I realized the error I had made, and was now cursing myself for eating the pizza my company had bought for lunch. It was a band-aid for the erratic change in hours we had been working, and we ate it like we've never eaten before. I should have known better. The pizza they ordered was the same as they always did, and it fucked up my stomach every time. I opened the car door and started stepping out of the vehicle looking across the dark lot. There were only a handful of cars in their giant lot. Shopping after midnight was both a blessing and a curse. For the most part, you had the store to yourself. On the other hand, the ones who happened to show had a habit of being sketchy as hell. I had gotten so sick of fast food in recent weeks, and I was dying to have some home-cooked leftovers in my lunch for a change. I was willing to roll the dice on tonight's midnight shopping crowd. One foot out of the car, and my stomach started bubbling again. I stopped moving, hoping it would soothe my stomach. I didn't have much time. Whatever was upset in there was ready to get out. I chanced disrupting my stomach and got out of the car. I made my way to the store clamping my ass together as hard as I could while blind aiming the keyless remote to lock the doors. I marched like I was on a mission, each step bringing me closer to losing it. I knew I looked ridiculous, but there was nobody in sight, so I shamelessly shuffled in. Through the automatic doors and past the carts, I immediately beelined left, my shoes squeaking as I hurried along. I didn't see any employees, and hoped to God there wasn't one cleaning the restrooms. Past the shutters of the closed subway restaurant and the darkened corner for customer service. I looked around, embarrassed, clearly walking like I was trying not to lose my bowels. Relief washed over me as I saw the sign for the restrooms, and I quickened my pace. I swerved left again down the tiled corridor for the men's section, and promptly died on the inside. The path was blocked, a large yellow cart keeping me from entering. Fuck, I seethed, and looked past to see if there was anyone in there. An old man in an apron and gloves was spraying a urinal, one slow squeeze at a time. I considered going to the other restrooms, but they were on the other side of the store. Another rumble in my gut told me I wouldn't make it. Hey, hey, excuse me? I tried to say politely, my knees shaking. The old man looked at me slowly, panning over like an owl. Just finishing up. I'll be a minute, he said, pausing his leisure spray of disinfectant. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm about to die. I'm not going to make it, I said dancing in misery next to his cart of cleaning supplies. He stared at me for a moment, taking his time, probably on purpose. Finally, he let out a laboured sigh and started walking slowly to his cart. Fine, if you're in such a hurry. He grabbed his cart and started pushing it out of my way. The wheels squeaked as he slowly created a gap, and I squeezed by as soon as there was enough rough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I said, and Power walked in. There were five stalls in a row, with the larger handicap accessible one at the end. My stall of choice was obvious. Picking one in the middle of the row would have just been... weird. I slammed the door, locked it, and silently praised the old man for cleaning the stall before I could ruin it. Sitting on the cold seat... I listened for the squeaking cart to go away. I heard it finally leave the bathroom entrance, and immediately unleashed the hell in my stomach. It wouldn't surprise me if the sound echoed through the entire store. I would never eat that pizza again.
probably. Aside from the shame, I felt much better. I yanked on the bouncing toilet paper roll, finished my business, and flushed. Chaos successfully averted. As the ambience of the toilet filling faded away, I prepared to stand and get out of there. I grabbed the waistband of my jeans, and a loud noise made me jump out of my skin. It sounded like someone had kicked open one of the stalls further down as hard as they could. My heart jolted in my chest. I thought of the employee that had been cleaning it, and assumed it was his attempt to get back at me for interrupting his job in the shittiest way possible. I sighed and tried to laugh it off. Oh, man, you got me, I said with a chuckle, my voice ringing in the silent bathroom. Uh, good one, old ma- Wham! The same sound echoed again, louder and closer this time. Whoever was doing it had moved down a stool in my direction. I found myself holding my breath in disbelief. I heard nothing aside from the creaking of the stool door as it bounced on its hinges. As quietly as I could, I leaned forward and tried to sneak a peek at whoever was responsible. I expected to see the old man's shoes walking to the next one, but was shocked to see none. Hello? I called, feeling very vulnerable with my pants at my ankles. I wanted to pull them up, but I didn't want to advertise my presence with the jingling of my belt and keys. I received no answer. Only complete silence. Goosebumps crawled all over my skin. I listened for movement, footsteps, anything. It was just so quiet, I couldn't even hear anything by the checkout line. I heard a single drop from the sink, then what sounded like a wheezing exhale. Wham. Two stools away, the door flew open and bounced loudly. Hey, man, come on. It's not funny. I pleaded and fumbled through the pocket of my jeans for my phone. I didn't know what else to do. Wham. The door next to my stool was next, and it bounced so hard it rattled the toilet paper dispenser next to me. I cringed and waited for mine to fly open, and whoever it was to burst in. I cowered on the toilet and raised my hands to protect myself. The stall doors creaked in a frightful chorus. Ahead, I watched the turn lock jiggle, like someone was trying the flat portion on the other side. Occupied, I'll be out in a minute, I blurted, my words stuttering. They tried the lock several times and seemed to give up. I could hear heavy breathing outside the door. I looked through the cracks in the stall, but there wasn't anyone there. All I could see was the mirrored reflection above the sink outside, my own awkward pose with my phone in my hand. I aimed my phone at the door, thinking if I could record it, I would be able to file a harassment charge or something. I opened the camera app and hit record, and froze. Through the video feed in my recording, was a large figure, tall and lanky. I couldn't see it directly, only its back in the mirror's reflection. It wore no clothes, and its skin was pale. Blue veins scrawled across its body. I held my breath, unable to look at the sight my phone revealed. Whatever it was, it was watching me through the stall. I sat there for a long time recording and the figure refused to move. Its heavy breathing echoed in the bathroom, and I wished for the first time in my life that someone else would come in and also use the restroom. With a low groan, it turned and walked away. I heard it push past the door in the stool next to me and get in. The sound of bare feet plopping on the tile. I heard it sit on the toilet next to me. I sat there for a moment, the recording still going, 
trying to breathe as quietly as possible. I leaned painfully slow and angled the phone under the stool. An oversized, shoeless feet lay flat on the floor. Its toes were too long, its ankles where they shouldn't be. I could also see its knees, like its limbs were too large to fit in the stool. Next to me there was a painful groan, followed by the sound of a horrid mess hitting the toilet water. The stench that followed was just as disgusting as the sound. With it occupied, I took it as my cue to leave. I sat straight and pulled my phone to my lap and switched the camera to forward facing so I wouldn't get my junk in the recording. My empty stomach twisted as my mind tried to make sense of what I saw. Behind my face, in the camera's view, was another, along with two sets of long fingers over the top of the stall. Its head was bold, save for some wispy strands, and its eyes were hollow, different sized pits. It had been peeking over the whole time, and its neck was getting longer. I screamed and fell off of the toilet. The tile was hard and cold, and I writhed like a worm on the floor. I struggled to simultaneously pull up my pants and flee, the stall door knocking my head as I ran into it. Without my phone, I couldn't see it, but I felt its breath on my face. Still screaming, I squirmed underneath the stall, scooting my way out and kicking my feet until I was out. I could hear the stools creaking under its weight as I thrashed to my feet. I bolted out of the bathroom, pulling my pants up as I went. I immediately crashed into something heavy and screamed again as I stumbled to the floor. Hey, watch it! The old man looked bewildered, his janitor cart knocked over, cleaning supplies rolling everywhere. I was on my feet in a second and running as fast as I could, one hand holding my unbuttoned pants up, the other still clutching my phone. I ran and ran until I was out of the store, nearly hitting the automatic doors as I fled to the parking lot. Chest heaving, I sprinted across the dark lot, barely buttoning my pants and getting my keys. Hands shaking, I got my keys and unlocked it as I approached. I swung open the door, barreled in, and slammed it behind me. I locked the doors and started the car. I shifted to drive and took one last look at the store before driving away. My throat was hoarse, my heart beating hard against my chest. There was nothing there, the automatic doors closing on their own. No one had followed, no one bothered to chase me. I looked at the doors for a time, wondering if it had even happened in the first place. It had all happened so fast. I was still trying to make sense of it. I wiped my forehead with my shirt, and when I looked again, the automatic doors opened. On their own. There was nobody there. I peeled out of my parking spot, blowing every stop sign out of the lot. I left the store behind me, not even wanting to look back. Maybe if I got far enough away, I think I would be able to handle fast food one more night. Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.